Hello, Hopewell. This is Mr. Steinberg. This is day two of e-learning. Uh, today we're still going to continue working on our guided notes packet. Uh, we're going to be doing sections four and five and talk about what a geometric sequence is, how is it different than an arithmetic sequence, but also some similarities. How do we write explicit and recursive formulas for geometric sequences? Um, as described up above, a geometric sequence is defined as a sequence with a common ratio. Now, a um, common ratio means that it's being multiplied instead of being added or subtracted, where we had common differences in our arithmetic. Your common ratio is a number that you multiply by, which we are going to call R. Something that I do when I teach this that sometimes a textbook won't do or Delta Math won't do is I switch a variable from uh, A sub N to a G sub N when I talk about geometric sequences. So I'm going to be using g sub n to talk about a specific term in a geometric sequence. Um, again, it's going to be helpful to know where we start and what the ratio is to uh, figure out what our next terms are. The helpful, t the helpful hint or tip that we have here in this box is to find a ratio. Once we're given a geometric sequence, what we can do is we can take uh, any term and divide it by the previous term to find a ratio. The only term we can't do that with, of course, is the first term because it doesn't have a previous term to look back on. So what we're going to do is sections, uh, section 4 and 5 today, starting with section 4, we're going to determine if each sequence is geometric or not. So there's a possibility that it's not. Um, if it is geometric, we're going to find the ratio using the method we talked about earlier. We're going to take any term and divide it by the previous. And then finally, we're going to find the next three terms in a sequence. Just a little bit of helpful notation, you take any term, so any term is a general term, so g sub n, and divide it by the previous term. The previous term would be one less in terms of its location. So if this were a five, this would be five minus one or four. So our ratio equals any term divided by the term immediately before it. So you just divide those values. Let's take a look if this first pattern is geometric. If I take the second term divided by the first term, I think that the ratio equals negative two. If this is a geometric sequence, that ratio should be true for every pair of consecutive terms. If I divide negative 64 by positive 32, I do get negative two. Negative two is our ratio for each pair. So we do know that this is geometric. Then it says, find the next three terms. All I need to do is multiply negative 64 by negative 2 to come up with our next term. 1, 2, 3, 4. So our fifth geometric term would be positive 128. I almost said negative. And let's continue to find g sub 6 and g sub 7. Negative 256. I just take negative 2 and I multiply the fifth term to get to the sixth term. I take negative 2 and multiply the previous term to get to the next term. And here we go positive 512. So that first one went pretty well. We just remind you, we're multiplying by a ratio of negative 2 each time we move down to our next term. Uh, exercise 2 is to the right. If I divide 2 by its previous term, 1, I get a ratio of 2. If I divide 6 divided by 2, I get 3. Since I'm multiplying by different numbers, this doesn't have a common ratio. The ratio is changing. Although I can describe this pattern, the fourth term is four times the third term, and the third term is three times the second term. I wouldn't consider this geometric. Let's write not geometric. And we don't have to complete this at all. Questions three and four at the bottom. Take a look, number three and number four. I'm gonna pause the video, so should you. You should decide whether three or four represents geometric sequences, and if so, what their ratios are. So for number three, I do think this is a geometric sequence. I think that if I take any term divided by the previous term, I get a constant ratio. That ratio value is three. Then we'll find the next three terms, the geometric fifth term, sixth term, and seventh term. Now, unlike last lesson, what I am going to do is use my calculator to do these. With constant increase and decrease, it's a little bit easier uh, than multiplying by ratio. Sometimes you might get decimals if our ratio is a number between 
zero and one, and that can get a little bit crazy. But I also want to show you what's important to, in how we use our calculator doing something recursively. Now, we are not going to make a recursive formula for this yet, nor do we know how to do this. But what I'm going to show you is how I can do this and generate a sequence recursively. I'm going to start with the very first term in the sequence of 20. Type that into my calculator and hit enter. So it's going to, of course, display 20 because I didn't give it any operations or commands to do. Now, if my if my ratio is 3, what I'm going to do then next is to press this button. I'm going to press the multiplication sign and times it by 3 and hit enter. What you notice is that it pops up the ANS or the previous answer. Now, we've studied recursive patterns yesterday or the other day. And what you'll notice is not only did I get the second pattern, the second number in the sequence called the second term, but it's set up recursively where I take the previous answer and multiply by three. All I now need to do is hit enter multiple times to quickly generate the next three terms in my sequence. And here they are, 1,620, 4,860, 14,580. This is done recursively where in place of the previous term, it's just I'm using my calculator to generate the previous answer and multiply it by my ratio. This is one of the tr neat tricks that I wanted to show you. And the reason why we learn things uh, recursively, and it's really the main benefit. Um, the bonus material for yesterday's lesson did cover what's the advantage of having an explicit formula, but this is the one time we have an advantage for using a recursive formula. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish writing my answers in here so I've completed notes. I don't want to leave anything empty. I'm just going to take the values from the calculator that I found and write these in here. Um, what did you think about the last one? To me, I think the ratio might be 1 11th, but it's not consistent throughout. If I divide this by this or this by this, I'm not getting the same number every time. And number four is not geometric. There's no guarantee that in this section it was, and in, in fact, this one it was not. Um, did you notice that although it's not geometric, I tend to believe that this is arithmetic? This concludes section four. Uh, please view the next, the next section, which is section five.